Hi there and welcome to another GIMP tutorial for beginners. In this tutorial I'm gonna go over some basic features of GIMP, free program for drawing and image editing. GIMP is similar to Photoshop, but way much easier to use and understand. After this introductory lesson, we can go over and start drawing cool cartoon characters and stuff. You can check out my channel for more of this cartoon stuff and make sure to subscribe to get more cool tutorials. So let's go ahead and start. First we gotta go to the official website and get the program. Go to www.gimp.org, click download and then select a link over here. The download process has started. Wait for a few seconds and then install the program. I'm not gonna go over the installation process because I'm sure all of you guys can do it. You just double click the executable file and install it like a normal program. After I run the program I've got three windows opened right here. The big panel in the middle of the screen is the main working panel. You're gonna draw some stuff here. In the left section here is a toolbox. It contains a number of useful tools like pencil, brush, bucket fill tool and others. Each tool has a number of options that can be configured in the Tool Options tab over here. And also there is a panel for layers. So let's go ahead and create a new document. You go up here to the menu, select File, New. In the open window you can set the width and height for your canvas. Or you can select from a list of predefined templates. I'm gonna go with 800 to 600 pixels. The first tool I'm gonna show you is gonna be the paintbrush tool. Go over to the toolbox and select the paintbrush. Then go back to the canvas and we're gonna draw a little smile over here. Paintbrush has a number of settings. I'm gonna go through only a few important ones. In this little box you can change the size of the brush. I'm gonna set it a little bigger, about 50 pixels. Then I'm gonna go over to this panel, click and select a new color for the brush. This is called foreground color. Next I'm gonna go to the right panel and select a new type of brush. You can choose among different brushes depending on what kind of picture you are drawing or what kind of line you need. You can select a hard brush, a very blurred one or some fancy looking brush. Try different brushes and see how they work. Next, I'm gonna use the eraser tool to erase what I have drawn so far. The eraser tool has the same options as the brush tool, but acts in the opposite way. I'm gonna change the size and choose the hard line. The next tool is quite simple. That'll be the pencil tool. It's like the brush tool, but has much fewer options to tweak. I'm gonna change the size of the pencil and then the foreground color and finally draw a letter C on the canvas. Then I'm gonna change the color to black and draw a smile. We're gonna need it to demonstrate the next cool tool. The next tool I'm gonna show you is the bucket fill tool. I'm gonna use this tool to fill some areas in with the foreground color. Select the yellow color then go over to the smile and click somewhere inside of it. And here we go. The bucket fill tool has filled the area within the circle. Notice that it does not go over the black line. If you click somewhere outside of the smile, the whole canvas becomes yellow. The bucket fill tool fills as much as possible within the same color. Press Ctrl Z to undo the latest changes. Next I'm gonna show you the rectangle select tool. This tool is very useful when you want to separate some area from the rest of the picture. Take this tool, go to the canvas and drag there to draw a rectangle. This rectangle indicates the selected area. Now you can move it around or resize any way you want. After a little bit of adjustment, I'm gonna leave this selection alone and go to the toolbox, take the brush tool and change the foreground color. If I start drawing right now, only the part of the canvas within the selection will be modified. Everything outside of it will not be affected. Then I press delete to remove what I've drawn 
and again all the changes happened within the selection. Let's go ahead and select the bucket fill tool and try to fill our selection and with the foreground color. Click and here we go, the selection is now filled with color. Press delete to clear everything within the selection. Next I'm gonna show you how to stroke the selection. Stroking is converting to a line. To do this you go to the menu, edit and choose stroke selection. There are a number of options here. You can change the width of the line or the style of caps and joints. Click stroke and the selection is now turned into a line. But the selection is still here, you know. There is some kind of dashed line still left on the canvas. To remove the selection go to the menu, select none. Next tool I'm gonna show you is gonna be the color picker tool. Use this tool whenever you need to pick a color from some part of an image. Let me show you how it works. I select the color picker tool, go over to the canvas and click somewhere within the smile. Notice how the foreground color over here changed to yellow. Now I can go ahead and use this color for my brush tool to draw a yellow smile. Next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show how to work with layers in GIMP. Go over to the left panel and select the layers tab. Layers are like separate sheets of paper. Currently we have only one layer called background. To add a new layer, go down here and press this little button below. In the new dialog here you can change the name of a layer, its dimensions and set it to either transparent, white or any other type. I'm gonna go with the transparent layer. Click OK and here we go. Now we've got a new layer on top of the first one. I'm gonna choose this layer to be able to draw on it. Next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the brush tool, change the color and increase the size a little bit and finally draw a spiral on the new layer. You should always remember what layer you're currently working in. If we go over to the layers panel, now you will see that the spiral appeared on the second layer we created. Next to each layer there is a little visibility button, click it to toggle the visibility of a layer. Next what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over a set of transformation tools like moving, rotating, scaling, etc. First I'm gonna try to move this spiral around. So you go over to the toolbox, grab the move tool, then go back to the canvas and drag the spiral anywhere you want. Like this. Notice that the spiral is moving separately from the rest of the picture. Next go to the toolbox and this time take the rotate tool. Now go back and click on the spiral. In the dialog here, try dragging this little slider to see how it affects the image. This slider basically changes the angle of the layer. I'm gonna rotate it to 180 degrees and press rotate for confirmation. Next I'm gonna show you how you can flip the spiral and to do this go and take the flip tool. Then click on the spiral to see how it works. What it does is, it basically flips the layer horizontally. To change the direction, go over to the Tool Options panel and change the settings. Now it's flipping the whole layer vertically. The last transformation tool I'm gonna show you is gonna be the Scale tool. Go grab it in the toolbox, then come back and click on the spiral. In this dialog here, there are a few important options to pay attention to. Here you can set new width and height for the layer. I'm gonna reduce the width so you can see how it works. As I change the width value, the spiral shrinks horizontally. Click reset to reset all the changes. Next I'm gonna shrink it vertically by reducing the height. If you want the proportions of the layer to be preserved, just toggle this change button. And now whatever dimensions you change, the image gets scaled proportionally. Actually, you can drag this grid manually or you can even grab the center and move it around. Press the scale button when you're ready to scale the layer. Next I'm gonna go over to the layers panel and create a new layer and name it layer 2. Then I'm gonna select it and hide all the other layers. This time I'm gonna show you how to work with gradients. And to make it more fun we are gonna draw a gradient within a selection. First go to the toolbox and take the ellipse selection tool, then come back to the canvas and drag to draw an oval. 
you can resize it if you want, and it's very similar to the rectangle select tool. Then go to the toolbox again and take the blend tool. The blend tool has a number of options to consider, but the most important ones for now are shape and colors. To make a gradient, we're gonna need two colors. So I'm gonna change the foreground color to red, and you can see it appeared right here. And the background color is gonna be blue. And the gradient image here gives you kind of preview of what the gradient will look like. Now you go over to the canvas and drag it to draw a line within the selection. Release the mouse and here we go. I would really recommend you guys to play around uh, with the gradient to see how it works. Now I'm gonna try and drag it in another direction. One thing to notice here is that the longer the line is, the more gradual blending it does. If I try dragging a short line, like this, you can see that the blending is very sharp. Now in the Tool Options section, there is an option called Shape. It basically defines the shape of the gradient. So far we've been working in the linear mode. I'm gonna try the radial shape this time. This shape is good for painting round objects. Or we can go ahead and select the square shape. It looks a little bit different. If you wanna switch the colors, you just go over to the toolbox and press this little button with two arrows. Draw a gradient again and here we go. We've got the colors switched. Finally, I'm gonna show you the spiral shape. And remember that the gradient fills a round area right now only because we have a selection on the canvas. If you remove the selection, the whole layer will be filled in with the gradient. Next I'm gonna go to the Layers panel and make all the layers visible. Then go to the menu, select None. Now I'm gonna take the Move tool and try to move things around. Go back to the Layers panel, hide all the layers and create a new one. This time I'm gonna create a white layer. As you can see, we've got a new fully opaque layer on top of the others. Next, go to the toolbox, take the brush tool and draw some shape like this one. And now, I want to select the area inside this loop line or whatever it is. And to do this, I'm gonna use the fuzzy select tool. What it does is, it selects an area by color. So if you now click inside the shape, the whole area inside of it, which is the white color, will be selected. Notice how it doesn't go over the blue color, but stays within the shape. There is one important option here you should be aware of. In the Tool Option tab here, there is a parameter called Threshold. It basically defines how strict the selection should be. The higher the value is, the more likely it becomes for close colors to be selected. So if I increase the threshold and click within the shape again, you can see that the selection has kind of moved forward and not only the white area is selected, but there is a small overlap over the blue area. If I increase the threshold even more, I'll get a much bigger selection. And a very high threshold value will result in the whole layer being selected. Usually the best choice is to keep the threshold a little above 100. Now I'm gonna take the bucket fill tool and fill it in with red. And here we go. Looks like a portal to another world. <laughs> the last tool I'm gonna show you is my favorite one, and it is gonna be the Paths tool. Basically what it does is, it allows you to create paths or curves, and then turn them into lines. I've got a separate tutorial for this tool, because there are so many things you can do with it, and I can't possibly cover all of them in this tutorial. I'm just gonna quickly show you a few things you can do with this tool, but without much explanation. So you just click on the canvas to make a line, also you can add new points, curve it around, loop and go through various editing things. Then I can stroke it, which is converting the curve to a line. And now I'm gonna draw a little spiral and then also stroke it.
Once you've made a couple of paths, you can go over to the right panel over here and there is a list of curves and you can choose any of them if you want to reuse it. The Paths tool is a great and powerful tool and I would really recommend you guys to watch my Paths tool tutorial. Well, in this tutorial we've covered a great deal of basic functionality in GIMP. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I hope it helped you get some idea how to use GIMP. You may also want to check out my drawing lessons on how to draw some cartoon stuff using GIMP. It's very easy and a lot of fun. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe or comment. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section. Thanks for watching.